Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're doing another weapon video and today it's going to be the top 8 best dexterity scaling weapons and where to find them. So these weapons are going to be ones that are great for dexterity type builds. They're going to be the ones that most effectively make use of that skill. And of course the main point is going to be where to find them. So uh, let's just dive on in and start off with number 8, the Arumi. So you can see here we have the Arumi equipped. It is a whip that looks like just a really flexible sword. As far as stats on this one, for attributes required to use it, strength of 10, dexterity of 19, so nothing ridiculous there. Uh, ridiculous there. It scales with both strength and dexterity, has a dexterity rating of B for the scaling. Uh, max attack power of 575 on this one, and an average guarded damage negation of 18.3. Honestly, pretty good stats, especially for a whip. Plus, this one can be upgraded using Ashes of War, so that's another great thing about it. As far as where to get this weapon goes, you're gonna have to make your set, uh, make your way over here to Liernia and come up through this, uh, this side here, the, the left side of the Lyranir region, and make your way into the Karia Manor. Then you fight your way through there until you get to the Manor upper level. Or, if you've already done all this, then you just come to the Manor upper level uh, fast travel point, or side of grace, I should say. Then you're going to want to take this elevator down. So once you've left there, you take the elevator down. And then we're going to be just getting down to the lower ramparts. So you're going to have to jump off these higher ramparts to the southeast. So you can see that there's a, uh, a space down there that we're going to want to jump to. And then we're just going to zip over this way, and you can grab the Arumi off of a body. And it'll be this guy sitting right here. So you just walk straight up to the body and grab it, and that's how you get the Arumi. So pretty easy to get, and a pretty cool weapon. As far as the uh, special attack for this weapon, it's just the kick ability, so... Uh, not overly useful to start with. It's pretty good for, I guess, breaking blocks or guard positions, but uh, I'd, I'd upgrade it with something a little bit better with the Ashes of War. So that is number eight, the Arumi. Let's move on to number seven. All right, so for number seven, we have the Bloodhound's Fang, which is a curved greatsword, and I know it's a, a lot of people's favorite weapon. Uh, I find it to be a pretty dang good weapon. As far as stats on this one go, for attributes required to use it, 18 strength, 17 dexterity, so nothing crazy there. We do have a passive effect, and that's that it causes a blood loss buildup of 55 points. Uh, for scaling, this one's Scales again with strength and dexterity. Uh, has a dexterity rating of B, so pretty good there again. Max attack power of 878 on this one, and an average guarded damage negation of 38.7. Uh, this one cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, but it does have the Bloodhound's Finesse special attack. And so for the description of this special attack, it says, Slash upwards with the Bloodhound's Fang, using the momentum of the strike to perform a backwards somersault and gain some distance from foes. Follow up with a strong attack to perform the Bloodhound's step attack. So this is, uh, whenever you fight a Bloodhound Knight type enemy, you'll notice they use this attack again against you a lot. So that's what it looks like. You do a big sweeping attack and then you come back and then you follow up with a heavy attack and it'll do the Bloodhound Step special attack. So it can be a pretty great special attack. I use it quite frequently when using this weapon. As far as where to get this weapon goes, you're going to do it here in Limgrave. You start from the Agil Lake South side of Grace and you just travel up to the top of this hill to the Forlorn Hound Everjail. Special shout out to someone in the comment section of my build video that uh, told me how to pronounce the word uh, jail there. I, I just assumed it was Gowl or something like that. But yeah, you just make your way up to this Everjail and uh, go into it and you fight the Bloodhound Knight. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that for you because I've already done it on this playthrough, but it's not that complicated of a boss fight. And that is how you get the Bloodhound Fang. So that's number seven. Let's move on to number six. All right, so for number six on the list, we have the Godskin Peeler. It's this twin blade, and I know this is uh, a lot of people really, really like this weapon. So for stats on this one, attributes required, strength of 17, dexterity of 22, so nothing ridiculous there, no passive effects, and for attribute scaling again, it's going to be strength and dexterity with a dexterity rating of B. Uh, for max attack power on this one we have 647 and for the average gr uh, guarded damage negation we have 34.7 so uh pretty middle of the road there this one has a special attack on it called the black flame tornado which is pretty useful especially if you have the fp to spare but it can also be upgraded using ashes of war so i know that's what makes it a lot of people's favorite twin blade uh so pretty great weapon as far as that's concerned as far as the special attack goes uh, the description is spin armament overhead and then plunge it into the ground to summon a raging vortex of black flames hold to create an initial flame tornado while spinning the armament armament so uh basically it just looks like this And so it can be a pretty useful attack uh, as far as area of effect stuff goes, especially for taking on lighter enemies that are kind of crowded all around you. It is also pretty useful against bosses, especially if they're susceptible to magicka damage. So it can be a pretty great weapon. As far as where to get this weapon goes, it's going to be up here in the Altus Plateau, and you're going to want to make your way all the way up here to the Windmill Village. And then you're going to fight your way to the top of this village, and you'll fight the Godskin Apostle up at the top, and they will drop this weapon. Uh, so this village actually is one of my favorite grinding spots for runes. A lot of people 
people don't seem to use this one. I don't know if it's maybe just me, uh, or if maybe it's just not that effective, but it seems pretty effective to me. Because it's full of these dancing idiots who, uh, if you kill them, A, they'll drop several unique weapons that this is the only place on the map that you can get them, so it's great to do it for that. And you also, of course, get runes for killing them, and they drop golden runes pretty, pretty frequently. So it makes it one of the best grinding spots, at least in my opinion, in the game. But yeah, so we're just gonna run up to the top of this village and fight the Godskin Apostle. And so once you've defeated the enemy up here, they will drop this weapon. So you can see we got the Godskin Peeler and the Scouring Black Flame Magical Attack. So, a uh, pretty great weapon, in my opinion, and not too hard to get. So that is number six, the Godskin Peeler. All right, and so for number five, we have Morgoth's Cursed Sword. So uh, another pretty cool weapon that I know a lot of people are going to be pretty familiar with. As far as stats on this one goes, attributes required to use it are going to be strength 14 and dexterity of 35, so pretty high dex requirement there, and arcane of 17, so this one will require arcane. As for passive effects, we cause blood loss build up, 62 points of that. For max attack power, we have 737, an average guarded damage negation of 31.2. This one cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, but it does have the cursed blood slice special attack. And so for that attack, we say brace, then charge forward to deliver a downward diagonal slice. The bloody trail of the late is followed by a burst of flame. Additional input allows for follow-up attacks. It's a pretty cool attack that you can do multiple times. So you can see that uh, it's got some, you know, pretty great abilities. I've used it to great effect against both bosses and larger crowds of mob-type enemies. So pretty fun special attack and a pretty great sword overall. As far as getting this weapon goes, it is going to be the reward for a boss fight. So you'll get this one for defeating Morgoth the Omen King. So once you've made your way to the uh, capital region here and you made your way up to the Elden Throne for the first time, you will do a boss fight and it's going to be against Morgoth the Omen King. Once you've defeated Morgoth, you can go to the Round Table Hold where you'll be able to redeem this weapon from any other finger reader when you trade her the Remembrance of the Omen King. And so that is how you get this weapon. So that's number five. Let's move on to number four. And so for number four, we have the Dragon King's Crag Blade. So it's a heavy thrusting sword, and you can see it's a pretty cool looking weapon. As far as the stats on this one go, for attributes required, we're going to have strength of 18 and dexterity of 37. So another one with a decently high dexterity requirement. Uh, no passive effects on this one. And for attributes uh, scaling, we have strength of D and dexterity of B. For max attack power on this one, we have 824 and average guarded damage negation of 37. So not bad there. This one cannot be upgraded with Ashes of War, but it does have a pretty cool special attack called the thundercloud form and so for this skill our description says temporarily transform into a red thundercloud and fly through the air then plunge down with a lightning infused blade hold to increase the reach of the thundercloud form so it's a pretty cool attack that uh i really like using it first of all once you've initiated it i don't think i've ever been taken out of it so i think it's unstaggerable and it does quite a bit of damage so pretty useful special attack and it makes the dragon king's crag blade one of my overall favorite weapons in the game but it also goes really really well with dexterity build uh so as far as where to get this one goes it is a late game weapon because you need to have made your way over to the crumbling fire missoula and uh, as far as i can tell the only way to get to the region where you do the boss fight in crumbling fire uh, Fire Missoula with this one is to progress through the story. So minor spoiler, I, I guess I shouldn't say minor, I guess major spoiler alerts for the story here, but you're going to need to have made your way through the first boss fight here at the Elden Throne and then gone up through the Forbidden Lands, taken the Grand Lift of Rold up into the mountaintops of the Giants and made your way to the Forge of the Giants. Then you need to do the thing that you do at the Forge of the Giants, which progresses the storyline. After you do that, uh, you will wake up in the crumbling Fire Missoula. Then you have to fight your way down to basically the bottom of it and lie down when the prompt is given. And you'll find a sea secret boss fight where you'll fight the uh, Dragon Lord Placidusix. Uh, and once you've done that, you'll have the Remembrance of the Dragon Lord, and you can trade that with Enya, the Finger Reader, at the Round Table Hold, and that's how you get this weapon. That is the Dragon King's Craig Blade, number four. Let's move on to number three. All right, and for number three, we have the Scorpion Stinger, so a very unique looking dagger. You can see I've got him dual wielded here, because that's my favorite way to use daggers. As for stats on this goes, uh, pretty low stat requirements, or attribute requirements, I should say. Dexterity of 12 and strength of six, so nothing ridiculous there. Uh, we do have a passive effect and that's that it causes a scarlet rot buildup so 50 points of that as for scaling dexterity for b and strength for d max attack power 549 and an average guarded damage negation of 23.7 this one cannot be upgraded using ashes of war but it does have the repeating thrust special attack so as far as the repeating thrust goes it just says twist to build power then unleash a flurry of thrusts 
So it's a pretty useful one. It, it uh, doesn't use much FP, and it does pretty rapid buildup as far as uh, damage goes. But it's not the most impressive special attack in the world, especially when you consider the very rapid dual-wielding speed that you can get by having two of them. So, you know, as far as usefulness goes, the special attack doesn't blow me away, but it, it is pretty useful, and the initial thrust does break through blocks. So, pretty good there. As far as getting this dagger goes, this one's going to be kind of a pain. So, uh, you need to make your way down to the Lake of Rot region. You can see we're at the Grand Cloister site of Grace here. And basically, the path to get here is a longer one. You have to start over in Siafra River, make your way all the way to the end of the Great Waterfall Basin, ride an abandoned coffin over to the deeper depths, and then from there you make your way to the Nameless Eternal City, and uh, somewhere right over here there will be another abandoned coffin that you then ride over to here, and then you have to make your way all the way down and through, down to the Noxtella Waterfall Basin, down through to the Lake of Rot. Then you have to make your way through the Lake of Rot, which is a giant lake full of Scarlet Rot, so that's not fun. Eh, but once you get to the end of that, you'll make your way to the Grand Cloister, which is where we are. So from there, you just follow the path that I'll show you right here. Well, that was close. I almost got killed by those things. I forget how annoying they are. But once you've uh, made your way through them, whether it's sneaking or killing them all, which can be a pain, uh, over to the far section here inside this building, you'll find it inside this chest. So that is how you get the Scorpion Stinger. So that's all for number three. Let's move on to number two. All right, so for number two, we have the Hand of Melania. So this one's going to be another one that you get from fighting one of the main game bosses. Uh, and it is a katana-type weapon, so I know it's going to be a lot of people's favorite uh, class of weapons just to start from there. As far as stats on this one goes, uh, for attributes required, uh, dexterity of 48, so pretty high there, but strength of 16. Passive effects, we do cause a blood loss buildup of 50. For scaling, we have strength of E and dexterity of B. As far as max attack power goes, we've got 691 and an average guarded damage negation of 35.7. This one cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, but it does have the Waterfowl Dance special attack, which I know a lot of people really, really like. So for the description on this attack, it says, Perform a series of one-footed leaps in the manner of a Waterfowl to unleash a swift yet graceful slashing combo. Repeated inputs allow for up to two follow-up attacks. So it's a pretty cool attack. Uh, I'll just show it to you here. So you can see that you can do quite a bit of... Uh, very rapid damage using this special attack, which I know is why a lot of people really like it. Uh, so even though this weapon cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, this special attack is pretty dang overpowered, so pretty great there. As far as how and where to get this weapon, uh, this one can be pretty endgame, but I've done it, uh, pretty early. So basically you need to have made your way as far as the first boss fight at the Elden Throne because then you'll be able to come up here through the Forbidden Lands and you'll have access to the Grand Lift of Roll. Then from there you can go up here to Castle Soul and once you've gotten to the back of that you'll get the first half of a secret medallion. The other half of that medallion can be found down here in Liernia at the village of the Albanorix. Up on a hill behind some buildings there's going to be a stone jar and you hit it it turns into a guy he gives you the other half of the medallion. Then once you've got the secret medallion you lift it here at the Grand Lift of Roll and it will bring you to the Consecrated Snowfield region. You make your way all the way through here to the Ordina Liturgical Town, break through the Magical Seal by lighting a bunch of beacons in an Everjail, and then once you're through to the Halig Tree region, which is, you know, what this whole process is about, you have to make your way all the way down to the bottom of the tree until you come to this section where I am right here. Then you will fight Melania, Goddess of Rot here, and once you've defeated her, you will get the Remembrance of the Goddess, of, or of the Rot Goddess. Then you can take that to Round Table Hold and trade it with Enya, the Finger Reader, and that is how you get this sword. Pretty tough boss fight to get this one, but I think a lot of people would agree it's pretty worth it because it's a great weapon with a great special attack. So that's number two, the Hand of Melania. Let's move on to number one. And so for our number one weapon on this list, we of course have the Moonveil Katana, which should come as no surprise to anyone since not only is it a great dexterity weapon, but also one of the best overall weapons in the game. As far as stats on this one go, for attributes required to use it, we have Strength of 12 and Dexterity of 18, so those aren't ridiculous, but it does have an Intelligence requirement of 23, so I know a lot of people won't like that, but it is the only one on this list with an Intelligence requirement. Uh, for a passive effect, this one one will cause a blood loss buildup of 50. For scaling, we have E for strength, B for intelligence, and B for dexterity. So this one is going to scale rather well with a dexterity intelligence build. So anyone looking to do sort of a spell blade, this is a great weapon for it. For our max attack power on this one, we have 736, and for our average guarded damage negation, we have 32.8. This one cannot be upgraded using Ashes of War, but we do have the transient moonlight special attack, which is pretty overpowered in a lot of ways. So our description for this special attack is sheathed blade, holding it at the hip in a composed stance, follow up with either a normal or a strong attack to draw the blade at great speed for an instant slash attack. Both attacks fire a wave of light. So this one is really, really useful. Basically, when you initiate the special attack, you just go into this stance and then you can either fire a light attack by doing that or a heavy attack like that. And of course, you can do this 
quite a bit. Pretty useful special attack. I know a lot of people really like it. I personally find it to be very, very useful, especially in combat against mob type enemies because a lot of times it'll one hit them. So very useful special attack. I can see why people really, really like it. As far as getting this weapon goes, it can actually be done pretty early in the game, which is great considering how great the weapon is. So you have to make your way over here to the Kalid region. Once you're up and around here, it's actually really close to where I usually enter the region from because all you have to do is make your way down to the Gale Tunnel. Once you've done that, you have to fight your way through the tunnel and make your way to the boss fight, which is going to be the Magma Worm boss, which you'll find down at the bottom. And once you do that, you'll be able to open up the tunnel from the other side. So I'm just going to zip through the tunnel real quick and uh, show you how to get to the boss. All right, and so it doesn't take very long to get to the region you have to be. This door here is the one that you'll have to open up so you can get through to the other side of the tunnel, and through this door you'll find the Magma Worm boss fight, which you can see I've already completed in this playthrough. Um, as far as boss fights go, this one is not too terribly difficult as long as you stay mobile. Uh, if you fought any of the other worm-type enemies in the game, you know what to expect. So that is how you get the Moon Veil, and that is the end of the video, because that is all eight of the best dexterity scaling weapons and where to find them. I hope you found this video to be useful. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, Maybe you think there's a better dexterity weapon out there that I didn't show, or if uh, you'd just like to recommend which video you'd like to see next, leave that all down in the comment section. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.